what you are looking at right now is an unstoppable force. Imagine blocking and attacking at the same time. And also, just basically ignore all the mechanics in the game. Wayne just plays his own game. So let's talk a little bit about him first. He is a very tanky character. He's got great self buffs. He's got great damage. Everything about him is good. Not even to mention Rampart. And for holding such a big axe, he's not that slow. It's quite fast actually, in my opinion. So let's talk about his gameplay style. We will be focusing on two things. The first thing is going to be his support skill. We call it the Bidao Gauge. The second thing will revolve around his skills. So how does the Bidao Gauge work? Whenever Wayne uses the combo finisher, he will gain some stack of the Bidao Gauge. This will depend on what combo you use. Another two ways of gaining the Bidao Gauge is by doing an ability and then combo finisher or a link attack into a combo finisher. What Fidel Gauge does is that it allows you to extend your heavy swing combo which does incredible damage and also great stun damage and it helps you to block all the attack in between as long as your guard doesn't break. There will be a total of 4 stacks so you can use all 4 of them for a full combo. One thing to note is that you can even dodge or perform a link attack in between as sometimes we need some kind of gap closer in order to get closer to the boss. Now this is a very important note to mention. Even though Wayne has 4 stacks and the full combo may look the most rewarding, it's actually not. Building up 4 stack can be a huge time and damage loss because in later boss fights, the boss is going to move around all the time and spending all 4 stacks is not going to happen very often. So basically just use your heavy swing whenever the boss attacks or just spending 1 or 2 stacks of the beatdown gauge will be perfectly fine. Now let's talk about his second most important gameplay mechanics which is that his damage comes a lot from his skills other than his combo finishers. Wayne has incredible skills, whether it is a buff or it is a support skill or is it a damage skill. However, some of his skills have a very long cooldown. For example, Rampart and Energy Destruction can be a very long cooldown skill. But worry not though, because we can make this long cooldown go to nothing. And here is how. So by combining the Cascade Siju and his character Siju, Hero's Will, every time he does the combo finisher, the cooldown is going to come back very very quickly. So his basic combo is going to be XXYY as it does the most hits. Here I am going to use some of his skills and let's just do his basic combo finisher to see how much down we've got from just a combo. The second game plan for Wayne is going to be spending his abilities as often as he can. Just use it whenever it comes off cooldown. This even apply to your energy destruction. You don't need a hundred SBA to use the skill. Let me show you how many energy destruction we can get before it even gets to a hundred percent.
let's have a look at his skills. On the screen will be my summarized version of what I think of the skill and what it does. You have four attack skills, three self buffs, and one support skill. First one is going to be Rampart. This is basically what you're known for. Heroic Beat is a short cooldown gap closing skill that will drain on hit. Energy Destruction, also one of my favorite skills. Scale with your SBA gauge. Then you go for the buff that gains yourself guts. This is permanent by the way, until it is proc. Attack and defense buff. This is temporary. Only the guts is permanent. Rift Divider is going to be your most damaging skill. However, the cast time is quite long. Breakthrough. This is kinda like a tanky style type of gameplay. Grant him hostility and attack up. Arm Destruction is a short cooldown, not that high damage, but high amount of stun. Soul Eruption, which is a more sustained style gameplay type, can be casted only when below 30% health. Fully restore his health and grant him 50% attack buff and 50% defense buff. I think this is only good if you have life on the line. Now moving on to gears and sigils. Once again, I break down into two parts, beginning of the game until extreme, and then maniac onwards. Now this is only my recommendation. You can play anything that you like that, that suits your style best. So your priority is obviously going to be getting your terminus weapon. If not, can go for ascension if both are still on the way. My recommendation would be the stun damage one or the HP one or the critical one. This will depend on your playstyle. Early game vein, what you're looking for would be something like stamina, cascade, quick cooldown, attack, and crit rate, crit damage can fill in between. For defensive options, Aegis would be enough, but you can pop a few in, of course, and bring improved guard also, then you don't have to care about anything in the game. For utility, normally Potion Hoarder is pretty good in general. You don't really need to bring guts if you bring the buff that gives you guts anyway. For late game vein, we will be focusing on the late game template, which is going to be damage cap level 65, war elemental, supplementary damage, hero's will. I see that supplementary damage actually adds another hit to his cascade as well, so the cooldown is going to be even faster. After filling in the template, you will have a few slots left. You can add defensive options or utility options. As for me, I just bring in Potion Hoarder once again and a few edges. And this is pretty much it on my take on Wayne. I hope that you find this video useful in some way and please do like and subscribe if you like the content. Thank you for watching and I will see you soon.